You just tuned it in. Global and worldwide. Hit you on the one with no delay. Because it's the Fighter's Voice. 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 The Fighter's Voice. With your fighting host, Richard Ortiz. And the formidable co-host, Mr. Cole Escovito. Escovito. Remember, every fighter has a voice. Fresno, California, how we doing? Rich Ortiz, your host here of the Fighter's Voice Knockout Radio Show. We're knocking out the competition. We got a great show for you today. First of all, our guest is in the house, Bellator's own Chris Honey Badger Honeycutt. He's going to talk to you about his controversial loss. He's going to talk to you on how that fight was not awarded to him and it was awarded to his opponent, and he's going to break it all down because there is options in this business. He's taking it to the powers that be, and they're going to look it over to make sure the officiating is on task, which I'm not surprised. Co Escovito, my co host with the most, the UFC veteran, the Apache kid himself. Co Escovito, welcome to the show, my man. How are we doing, amigo? Hey, right off the bat, you know these judges are on hit, right? You know, they see everything, you know, they're top notch, top you of know, the line. I, I've always had the perspective that, A, anybody who judges should have a, re- a fighting record. Absolutely. Period. End of story. Absolutely. If you don't have a fighting record, you, because first things first is that when they're looking at an angle, they don't see what you see. So it's even safe to say, like, even if your wife judges you, she should have a fighting record <laughs> because she kicks your butt all the time because you're not washing your clothes or the dishes mm, nah, or, man, if I'm not or bringing home the end, bacon, right? If I'm not holding up my end, that's just, you know. I mean, we're going to jump right to it. Speaking of husband and wife, congratulations to our guest, Mr. Chris Honeycutt, who finally got on one knee, and this time it was for the right reason. Talk it to us about that. It wasn't from a liver shot or anything. <laughs> no, no, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. I mean, really, congratulations. I'm looking at your uh, fiancé right now, man, and you know what? Her eyes are sparkling more than her big old rock on her hand right there. I know. Man. We had to dim the lights. Yes, as soon we did, as, as soon as she walked in, he was like, dude, bro, no, okay, turn it down. Yes, turn the lights let's, down. Let's turn it down. Let's turn it down and let so that diamond how, shine. So how long did you know, because she didn't know until it happened, but how long before that happened did you know? Well, it, it's been some time. I mean, there's no surprise, really. No yeah. Time, but I mean, we've been together for eight and a half years, so it was common. But, yeah, yeah. It's just finding the right yeah. time to do it in the right way. Yeah, yeah I mean, just <clears throat> out, of the, out of the blue, I went out and got a ring, and I probably held on to it for maybe six, seven, eight days or so. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah. That's a long That's a long time. Every Dang. time you're not 100% sure where it is, you're like, where did I put the ring? Yeah, oh, yeah. no. Oh, no. <laughs> When's the right time? Is it this time or that time? Right, right. Well, I was wondering that, and then, you know, I was just like, you know what? I'll just do it right now and get this over with. So they, you, so they <laughs> yeah, had no. it. Your corner guys had it with them ringside then, or no. did you have it like all up in your shorts? Oh, I stuck it right in the garage. Oh, oh okay. okay. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna say right in the maybe the. I thought you were gonna like mention uh, like, some like other the Pulp Fiction movie or something and <laughs> no, Christopher Walken no, and, no, and the watch. No, no, no. So you no. just had it and decided right now. Let me, let me remind you, uh, uh, Cole Scavito, that this is the Knockout Radio Show, it is. not the podcast. It is. We're on. We're on a rope. Yeah, we're on a thin Chris, rope. Christopher Walken. Right, Christopher so Walken. For me, your ring, I hand to you. Uh-huh. <laughs> that was great. That was wonderful. That's all I'm picturing with Bruce that. Willis, so, yes. were you nervous? Might have to be more nervous in the fight. Um, I think I was more nervous when I was, you know, getting there and mm-hmm. doing the whole ring shop and all that. You know, you only do that once. Yeah, you want to you want to get it right. You don't want to be like, oh, hold on, wait, no, let me start over. Yeah, no, you don't have one of those. But uh, I mean, honestly, I thought it was gonna take you know a couple hours, a couple different places. Yeah, you know, I knew in like two minutes. It's just, yeah, and they always say it happens that way. I'm like, yeah, right. So, <laughs> so it, let, it happened. I was so angry. I was so upset. I'm like, I can't believe this took this only took ten minutes. Chris, I, I gotta ask you this. And come on, let, let's be honest. Okay, were you thinking brand new Camaro, ring? Yeah, mm. right. It's, these these things that I need a Mustang ring. I mean, was it going back and forth? Oh, it was going back and forth. <laughs> I'm sure it was, my man. man. <laughs> like, pay off the truck. <laughs> Ring. Well, yeah, at that point, because you're looking at like, okay, it's, it's been so long. Yeah. She knows I'm not going yes. anywhere. Like, yeah. she knows I'm not going anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. Do I help better our scenario or ring? Like, you got to pick one or the other. And it's at that point, it's like, it's a it's a deservation type level thing. You start looking at like, what does she deserve? She deserves a ring. She deserves yeah. being proposed to kind of thing. Or so. else we would have noticed the picture. I don't know if uh, who posted this picture today. Somebody in the UFC beat the snot out of somebody. Oh. There, was a, there was a woman who beat the snot out of this guy. And see, that could have easily been Chris, and she could have beat the <laughs> snot out of him, right? If you put the pictures right there, because he would have said, if he would have drove home and said, hey, my, my truck is paid off, honey. Oh, yeah. by the way, I got. By great the way, news. I got a Camaro. We own the Chevy. <laughs> yeah, we're set. We're set, girl. I took care of that. Yeah, you what? You what? Yeah, yeah. I came into a bunch of money and 
We're set. And, and then he's on one. He's saying, look what I brought home. And it's that Camaro just coming in. You know what I mean? That Camaro can be the ER reward. Yes, right? uh, yes, exactly. You I like purple, right, hon? Like, it's your yeah. favorite color, too. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now it's yours. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that would work, you too. You get to drive it, too. Right? You know? I'm, I mean, hey, I, I, that would be a new spin on it. Yeah, that would I didn't get your ring. I got you, I got you a $35,000 car. Brand okay. new. Yeah. I got you the car you wanted. Done. Paid for, hon. Yeah. Yeah. And my commitment is only this car until I pay it <laughs> off, right? I better stop, like, man. I mean, when you get to that point, like I said, like at a certain point, yeah. she knows you're not going anywhere. She knows you're committed. She knows you love you. She knows yeah. you're for the long haul. Maybe you get them something they want. Bro, if she washes your dirty laundry, hold man. on to her. Hold I mean, if she her. wants to bling, get her the bling. Don't get me wrong. That's something yeah. she can show off. But yeah. like, if she's like, man, I've always wanted like a new Dodge and see, Charger. Especially because they can wash the laundry. Now, Chris. Say yes or no. If she folds your calzones, she's a keeper <laughs> rather than they just throwing them in the drawer. You know what I mean? Well, I'm the one that throws them in the drawer. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. There you go. But she washes man. them and then they're there you go. Okay. Nice there you go. Yeah, she gives them the there pile and goes, There you go. Here I'm you not go. your butler. Put them yes, away. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, we're just having fun with this, my man. First of all, I mean, congratulations. I really, I mean it. And uh, we better get an invite. She will be there. We'll be broadcasting man. live. At the honey cut, <laughs> honey bad I wedding. Know. I don't know if <laughs> no, I'm gonna put a Mark yeah. Ruffalo and be like, "You're live facing this whole trailer." We're gonna that be parking wouldn't... cars like Arsenio Hall and uh, dude, yeah, <laughs> right, <laughs> Murphy, right? That would need to be the podcast. Oh, oh that, that would be the podcast. <laughs> we'll do Definitely. it from the wedding. Like we'll yes. take like a ten minute break, let this ceremony happen, and be yes. like. Okay, we're back. Yeah. And like before, no alcohol. All of a sudden, there's alcohol and cake and just tipped over bottles on the table. There you are. You're like, all right, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> we're back, ladies and gentlemen. For how long, I do not know. Man. Talking about back, I'm hearing you may have that fight back or that loss removed or that decision removed. Talk to us about that fight, that controversial loss. Because I watched the fight, honestly. I watched it three times. And if not for that kick, I don't see why he even scored the way he scored it. And for you to get back from that shows two things, your will, your heart, your desire, and that you're in great shape. Well, in my opinion, I mean, other than that kick, if, if that kick didn't happen, then I would have had a flawless fight. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. it would be completely flawless. I, I mean, any time he hit me or whatnot, I mean, he put like a little red mark on my leg, but, you, you know. No I'm, real no real just, damage just, done just kind of visual. the match, I'm just like, bring it. Keep, I mean, it's, they're pointless. They're, they're not going to affect the fight. But, um, you know, the, I mean, the big, the chance of it actually being reversed is highly unlikely. I don't think it's ever happened before, just by my judges' opinions. But uh, I'm trying to get, you know, I'm, I'm fighting for the win because I, I I feel like I deserve the win. It, I, it was a victory for me. Just looking at his demeanor when they were announcing the scorecards, mm. his head was down. He was looking at it, and then when they announced that he won the split decision, it looked like he was a child that just walked into uh, like a like new like Toys like R Us back. In the woke day. up on a Tuesday and it was Christmas for some reason, kind yeah. of thing. Like yeah. super surprised, he but super so excited. Oh, like was, I'll take it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was jumping up and down, swinging his arms like he, you know. Crazy, yeah. but uh, you know the biggest one is the first round because the first round's like I even went back and then, and I don't know if it if it caught recording or not on a different camera, but it's like I even told my uh, Bob, my manager and and, and head quarterman, it's like that was in the bag. I mean, first round, first round. I mean, I felt like I did that. I did better than the first. I did in any part of the fight, and then they had me losing the first, two of the two of the judges had me losing the first round. Mm -hmm. He 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 took me down one time for four seconds just. Just because he did a little inside trip on the side of the cage. It's, Other than that, four seconds later, it's like not only was I up, but he was down. And so he didn't really get to do anything with the ground takedown. Not he had at loss all. of yeah, loss of action. The only other time he was on my back was when I was on my feet, and that's because I slid off the front of him, <clears> and he had just hopped on. But that's not his doing; that's my doing. Mm. And again. 20 seconds later, he was back on the ground. For the most part, you control the fight. I didn't see you in any uh, danger at all, any shape or form. And when he did score w w with the leg kick, uh, you were coherent the whole time, and you were you were in the fight. You were pushing the fight. Yeah, no, he was kicking me in the leg, and I was I was marching forward. I mean, that's the only reason why he was able to kick me in the leg, because I was marching forward. If, Sounds if I was like... Back uh, up, he would be missing. D uh, Diaz Condit. Everyone, like, I oh, watching man. the fight, I was like, <clears throat> Diaz has got to have this in the bag, because everything he landed was... Bang, 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 combos, head kick, leg, I mean, everything he landed. And then I thought about it, and I was like, the damage was there. Like, you could tell he just hit everything. And then he loses, and I was like, what the hell? Yeah. And then I went back and watched it, and I was like, okay, they're just like, the judges were just point counting yeah. everything. They weren't really looking at the fight. It's like they were just like, okay, that landed. 
that landed, that landed down. Like yeah. they weren't looking at, is it doing damage? Is it dictating the pace? Is it controlling the fight? Is it a defensive attack or is it an aggressive attack? Like those are two very different yeah. things. Like a guy throwing a jab at you backing up yeah. is trying to keep you away versus him coming forward yeah. with a jab. That's yeah. an aggressive attack. That's Absolutely. control of the fight. So I could see Chris landing all kinds of damage where it should matter because it's dictating the pace of the fight. You're controlling the, the, where it goes. He got down, didn't do anything. Chris got right back up and put him down. So it's like, if I want you down, you'll be down kind of thing. If I want to be up, I'll be up. Yeah. Meanwhile, you've got Bean Counter over there, ringside going, Yeah. just yeah. tallying there's, away, not even doing like, there's a okay, lot it looks like it landed. That looks like it landed. Yeah. And even thing too, that looks like it landed. Again, my back's to Chris, or I'm, I'm a judge with the back to Chris, and I see him throw something. I can't see if it landed. To me, maybe Chris missed when he did land. He landed a jab, dude's whole head popped up like a like a Pez dispenser, but the judge doesn't see it. Chris, when, when that um, decision was announced, I mean, what was going through your mindset? I know disappointment, of course, oh. but I mean, I, it had to be, because I'm looking at you like, are, are you are you freaking kidding me here? Are you kidding me here? Yeah, no, I mean, there's a, Anthony Louise, A-Train was there, and, yeah. and uh, you know, his manager in the corner and all that, and they said they didn't even watch that part. They, they As soon as the third round ended, they left, they just assumed that I won. And uh, I mean, there's a lot of people that did that as well. But the, the biggest thing is, is like you said, it's like I tried to look at it from that point of view because I didn't really cause as much damage as I typically do. I, I had my hands wrapped a little tighter than, than, than I usually do just because I had a sprained wrist going into it. But um, so, so my punches really weren't causing a, a massive amount of damage, but mm -hmm. the amount of punches that I landed while I was on top of them out far away. And when I was talking about leg kicks, it's like he threw like four. It wasn't like yeah. the whole round. It wasn't he was like your leg there. looked like your eyes after Jose Aldo or something. Yeah, or he was, or he was, you know, sitting there putting some sort of tech, technic, uh, technical like collision. Or mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, he wasn't just. It wasn't he, like he wasn't, it wasn't like fifty kicks. Not and, damage. And just, it just it looks good. It was, I, it was like it four or five. Yeah, I'm just like bring it. And so, like they said, something like that will look. I've seen fighters win fights. Yeah. Where I'm like, dude, have you no ever damage. have you ever uh, been around and, and you've seen a fight overturned or or a no decision? When's um, the last time that's happened for you? I I've never had I've never been involved in, a, no. in an overturnment, okay. but as far as my experience and seeing them, it's it's like a rarity. Usually, it's got to be something where like Chris finds out that he's got some dude that admits on tape that they tampered with homie's gloves okay, at before the fight, of, or somebody admits he was on yeah. something, or one of the judges goes. Yeah. I screwed up. I I wrote those points on the wrong card. That's one hundred percent me. That was my those and, rounds and, should be. And Chris's. usually when that happens, they'll they'll uh, mandate uh, um, automatic. Uh, we'll bring it back a rematch, and you'll get back in the cage or back in the mat again. Talking about coming back, we're gonna come right back here from commercial break, and we're gonna address some issues, some concerns that we have in Chris's life. Is he gonna get that big call? Is he gonna get the decision, or is he going back in the cage with the same man? I want to keep you guys thinking and uh, anticipating when we come right back. Rich Ortiz here with the Fighters Voice Knockout Radio. Remember, we're knocking out the competition. Hi, I'm Jose Ramirez. I'm Bob Arum. Hi, I'm Robert Garcia, and I'm with the Fighters Voice. Yeah, the only radio show knocking out the competition. The Fighters Voice Radio Show. We're knocking out the competition, and we're going to knock out Chris because we're going to knock out some answers. I want to know what's next for the Honey Badger, Chris Honeycutt. I'm Rich Ortiz, your host of the Fighter's Voice. With Coach Covito, the co-host with the most, the one and only, the Apache Kid. Chris, let's get right to it, man. What's next for you, man? What do you think the governing bodies are going to do? What do you think the appeal board is going to do? Um, I mean, I'm not sure because it's the it, it's the Chicken Charles Nations Casino where the fight took place, and then uh, I actually started getting to the – Oklahoma State Athletic Commission to get, you know, to figure out, you know, get some answers on what's going right. on. And I actually very quickly, I mean, they, they answered the phone. They said, listen, we have nothing to do with it. It's the Chickasha Nation. They have their own commission and they do everything in house. So, uh, really? So I sent it into the Chickasha Nation's Board of Athletic Representatives or whatever exactly. they call it. Yeah. And, uh, and asked them for, you know, to review the fight and, and all that and they sent me back they're going to give me a hearing so on february 6th at 10 a.m i'll be in there february 6th in front of the uh the the whole imagine, the, now the imagine the, the commission you'll probably have uh tribe council members will probably be there they probably have crossover yeah, duties I mean, and stuff i mean do they have more of a word or a say than bellator itself when well, you think, wouldn't Bellator have it or they're just the remember, promoter Bellator's they're, they a just, promoter they, they just put on they, the, they, they put they on, on the shows the okay. they don't 
Yeah. They don't They're not the governing involved. body. Yeah, they okay. don't want to get involved okay. with who won or lost. That's why, okay. like, even Dana White, he'd be like, I want to be Switzerland. Yes. I love every guy. Like, because he wants to be able to be buddies <clears throat> right. with whoever right. and yeah. not be ever accused of it having it, which, I mean, those are different politics. But well, he's made it clear, too. He, he's not always in agreement with the officials. Yeah, and he said, too, he's like, I don't agree at all. I've seen him walk up and hand dudes money and be like, I don't agree with that at all. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, um, I am actually that piques my interest when he says that the the nation the the nation is going to be the reg- regulating factor. Like usually it's a it's a commission that goes we are in sync with New Jersey or Nevada or California right. or whatever Texas whatever. But for this particular scenario, from to say it's the nation, that's different. Yeah. That makes it a little bit different. That actually makes it. I want to say almost makes it even easier you to think? actually get. I do because I here's know. the thing: is remember, you've got an athletic commission: New Jersey, Texas, California, Nevada, Denver, California. whatever. They're all kind of like uh, like poker tournaments. They all yeah. operate on the same kind of rules. They've all made an agreement where, hey, Rich, you run a tournament, you run it with these rules. Honey Badger, you run a tournament, we run it by these rules. I run one, we run it by these rules. He runs one. We all kind of agree that we're going to run it by these set of rules so right. that when players move around and come visit our different casinos, they're all used to a consistency of play. It makes it a right. lot easier. So that's what all the athletic commissions do. Nevada, New Jersey, Texas, Cal- uh, Denver, and I think Colorado are kind of on their own page, but the other ones kind of all are in sync with uh, ruling, sanctioning. But that's why they had to move it from Nevada to California. California's like, whatever. <laughs> when Nevada's like, no, nope, Jones, you can't. Sorry, you got you to gotta drop. Can't do it. Can't sanction it. All right, Nevada's, or California's just like, whatever. I think the guy's name is Low Heights so, of, of California. But the, the point I'm getting to is they're all regulated on the kind of a say, set agreement. Real letter of the law. Sorry, it was a it was a drop, dude. Go to Cali. Like we just saw an example. Yeah. Yeah. These guys, you have more of an appeal, you have more of an empathetic edge that you can post now. You can go, dude, really watch the fight. You really watch the fight. Get get with some like member uh, commission members for your for your representation and stuff and say watch it together and they may say we already have and here's what we feel. Because at least at that point, you're more likely to, A, if they don't agree with you, you're going to get an answer. They're going to say, we reviewed it. Yeah. And here well, we I see. think you hit it right on the head when you said consistency. Now, they may want to change it, but it's consistency. Can you imagine how many, they have Chris more say. Cu- how many Chris Honeycuts are going to be calling? Well, now... And have, they, been, and have been victim of the same circumstances of, how grot- many of, them have of grotesque asked. officiating? It wouldn't really be considered a grotesque of officiating. It would just be considered... Uh, okay, I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm being nice. I'm being nice. Well, I mean, they would maybe they might be sitting a precedence, or they may sit you down and go, "Look, here's the thing: you're like the 45th person that's had a fight here that's asked us to overturn a decision. The answer is this: we don't overturn decisions. Yeah. Yeah. They might, they yeah, might yeah. do that. They might be well, real apathetic, I, but they I, might. I would hope if that was their stance that they would just they denied me on my hearing. And that's what I'm saying too: is they if that were the stance of a mandatory no, because it's not like I can just email them or send them or mail i i i have a plane ticket. yeah you I'm, have to show up i'm showing up i'm flying to dallas i'm running a car for two days i'm <laughs> going to the casino <laughs> well, for all you know they may down. say okay chris thanks for showing up so what we're going to do is we're going to yeah. have a private view a uh, viewing session and then gonna you're going to sit down with us and we're going to watch it there's going to be four of us in the room and we're going to watch it together and then we're all going to have a talk they might do that yeah that'd be awesome. this might be the first time they might say look hey, this man. they might have already made a decision and they're like dude this is the first time we've ever done this Hey, with something like that, at least they're going to review and look at it. If that's the case, at least you can sleep better at night. True. Yeah, I mean, like, like if I can use, if they don't overturn it and they, I mean, I don't know what they can come up with to give me answers about. I mean, they, what, that, he, that he attempted to finish the fight because because he had a couple submission attempts. They whatever, might they whatever, might do the same thing. They might say we we had a bean counter tally, all the yeah. strikes that landed, and yes, they weren't as damaging they, as, as yours. They don't have that. I, or, I'm, or they're going to say, I'm, you know what? Thanks for bringing it to our attention. We're ready on it, and we're resolving it. We're bringing you a solution. Would you like a buffet? Because it's yes, not like exactly, I just show exactly up. a free stay at night for your I, wedding anniversary or honeymoon or something. Yeah, it's not like I just show up either and and you know and argue my case. Or, or you know, and that might be what they're doing they, too. I have to, you know, gather information, submit evidence. So I'm getting, uh, you know, like written statements from some people that you mm. know hold maybe a little weight within. Uh, oh yeah, I would definitely states. show up with more than and more than ammunition. Course, I have my phone on here. I would show up with all that kind of stuff: statements, videos, yeah. interviews, oh, uh, to, clips. To, why don't they have it all submitted prior to that? So mm, that before the February just, 6th just hearing, just like a typical court. Yeah, yeah, you'd have to submit all exhibits that you want to have present in the hearing because anybody that wants to rebuke the other side, which, like I said too, they may just them saying, "Come on out." 
maybe they want to hear his well, side I, and well, stuff. I, well, I like, I like this because that's the fighter in him willing than just accepting it. He's willing to fight back as much as they're allowing him to legally and mm. getting that hearing and getting that appeal and maybe that slim chance of having it overturned mm. or bringing it to their attention says, you know what, Let, let's run it back. You see, now, yeah. the, now real, the real hurdle, though, is, is not the hearing. I can tell you that right now. The, the real hurdle is not the hearing. That actually might go in your favor. They might be empathetic and actually be like, you know, we watched the fight. We actually don't agree with those judges, and we can overturn that, and we have. It's getting the rest of the collective MMA world and stats and record keepers and promoters to recognize them overturning it. Don't they have to? They do not. No? No. That the Remember, for the same reason that they can make their own decision is because they're separate from the other athletic commissions. Athletic commissions can't enforce anything on them they as an organization have adopted certain rules and regulations and things like that like you can more than likely get away with juicing well, on, I, on a I, casino I know in, private I, fight I know in boxing they can uh, call it a no decision that happened with Roy Jones but that's because of the fight of uh, the hit after the after the and there's after, that's, after there's that a, match yeah a, a, a exhibiting factor yes. outside of that and, fight and itself. in boxing what they did as well too is they brought it to the attention of judges and yeah, that's what, uh, talking about. And what they did is uh, judges yeah. and they no longer are judging they've been banned for life yeah, I mean, that, exactly. we'll take it as, as far back as uh, Roy Jones. And they may, come, mean, they may say we've had a problem with this judge in the His past. judges for the Olympics, uh, they're banned for life. They mm -hmm. can no longer sit there in the seat of, of officiating. Now, granted, they may say yes, and they may have a really valid reason to. And they may say, look, we, we reviewed it. And the other athletic missions may say, well, we recognize yeah. you. They don't have to because they're separate. Because these guys can do kind of yeah. what they want it kind of forces them to operate on their own. They have to adopt the athletic commission's regulations and rules yeah. and say, we are going to adopt those and recognize them. Not like, we're not going to copy them. It's we're, we're recognizing your already existing regulations. You, and you, rules. you talked about it earlier. Consistency. Consistency. Exactly. They exactly. want to be, they want to have events and be part of the, the whole real Believe MMA. Me, they're getting on the phone and saying, Hey, I, this is what's going on here. And they're going to say, I know we get those all the time. Uh, basically what we do is we do a B and, mm. uh, See, yeah, they may, they may have done that in the past too, and say, "What's the policy regarding this?" And they say, "Man, well, there's a process. Yeah. Why would I would have a hearing?" And you know what? I, exactly. I'm surprised it's going to be this soon because there is a process. Oh well, they want to do it the sooner the better. The sooner and the faster. Yeah. Everything's fresh. The ref, it's it's fresh in the refs, the yeah. judges, everyone's mind still. It's it's fresh. They want yeah. to get that still when it's fresh. It matters. Yeah. Hey, well, we're going to be rooting for Chris Honeycutt when that time comes. That's February 6th. And talking about fresh, we're going to take a commercial break, but we're going to come back with some fresh news on what's going on in the MMA world, what's going on in the boxing world, in the Fighter's Voice Knockout Radio Show and the Fighter's Voice Podcast. I'm hearing we're on location, really, at Garcia's Academy, Boxing Academy. Mm. Wow, that's just what a rumor I've been hearing. We'll come back and we'll get down to the nitty gritty. We'll find out if it did happen. And if it did, stand by. And Nicole Escovito is going to let us all know what he got cooking at home. Actually, man, you are actually, cooking yeah, something at I home. I do. Yeah. I can totally tell you. Yeah. What do you got cooking, man? We're actually going to make uh, baked chicken with uh, pasta alfredo with hey, mushrooms. Yeah. Only on the Knockout Radio Show, man, as we cook. We tell you what we're cooking, and he doesn't even want to share. That's why he's over there. Frasso didn't bring him any tamales. We're going to take a commercial break, come right back here. Richard Ortiz with the Fighters Voice Knockout Radio Show. Remember, if you're not here, it's probably because you've been knocked out, and we're knocking out the competition. The only radio show knocking out the competition. The Fighters Voice Radio Show. As you know, we're knocking out the competition. We're back. Rich Ortiz here with the Fighters Voice Knockout Radio with Coa Scavito with the Honey Badger, Chris Honeycutt. Hey, we got some news to break in the MMA world, in the boxing news, and even some bare knuckle news, and also some news on the fighter's voice going on location for 2019. Well, the rest, I'm not sure what they're going to do. They could just watch us, man. Enough said, man. Tell us what's going on in this yeah, MMA new, uh, news, this world. Cold. You know, I was looking, and I spent like a good almost hour and a half, two hours today looking, really looking at like, well, what's real relevant? Like, there's, there's just been some a lot of things, man. Last week's been real thin. I mean, there's a couple things, been. but it's just real thin. I mean, you've got like, okay, like things like Derek Lewis, Dos Santos. That's going to okay, be added yeah. to a Mar uh, I want to say a March ESPN card. But yeah, see, I almost said Fox. No, yeah. yeah see, yeah, and that's yeah, what everyone's exactly. thinking too. The ESPN, like I said, it's a good thing. But uh, the thing I noticed that like right below that was notes was there's just, they posted their schedule yeah. with their new partnership, the new distribution, the new fight night schedule, like ESPN, all the, the new partnership. ESPN's like, uh, like the zone kind of thing. Like they're, yeah. they're, we're going to squeeze you for every, every card we can get out of you because mm -hmm. we're paying for it. We already paid for it. 
I, I, I feel sad. I feel oversaturated sometimes when, when, when I looked at that list, yeah. dude, there was something going on. It looked like every day, boom, 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 boom. Wow. Now, granted, it was a lot of just fight nights, uh, ultimate fighter finales, fight nights, fight okay. nights, things like that. There was some uh, on ESPN cards, and it did look like this. I'll give them credit for this. It looks like they've quietly started to pull the rope back on how many pay-per-views they do. It looked like they were just one every month. Like the schedule looked like it was just one a month, which is fine. I remember back in the day where you wouldn't get one for like three yeah, or four, yeah, six months. Yeah, you get like four or five a year. Exactly. So you'd yeah. pile all in and do it. Now, then it started to get like all the time. And then recently it was like a couple times a month. Well, you, you got the fanatics. They really don't care, man. You just got those ones, that, that one group. There is. But yeah. you got to remember, your fanatics don't make up your overall market demographic of fans. You want the casual guy. Yeah. You want the guy who doesn't have household names memorized. You want him to watch. But if you're doing it all the time, he's going to be flipping through his channels, boom, yeah. boom, 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 and just skip right over it. It's something yeah. that he was like, hey, dude, did you hear about that UFC? Yeah. So like, and I, I brought this topic up before, and I won't say who I brought it up with, but I brought someone higher up the food chain, like way higher up the food chain than me. And they're, they're, just, they're just different opinionated about it. They think that giving the fan outlet access to as much as possible is, is the way to go, but for like the free, like how do we give you as much free content as possible? I mean, now here's the thing too. I think it's a mix of how do we give the fans all the content we can right. for free access. We want them watching what us. We want them watching yes. us. I think it's a little too much, but you've also got a buttload, truckload, long truck list of rostered fighters that you have contracted fights for. Yeah. You have to get them fight somewhere. So now you can kind you of can't start. can't shelf them. You got to get them busy. You got to get them moving. True. So I would say by this time, 2021, you see a thinned out roster, you see less fights, and you see better pay-per-views. I see, I think what they're doing kind of one of the business plans here is let's just put on a bunch of fights, get all these contracts done. Right. And we find out, we'll see who we want to keep. Well, I'm not only that, it's a competitive market. ESPN wants to blow out Fox anyways. They want, to look, they want a, a UFC to say, hey, you made the right decision. True. True. I and, think and Fox really isn't going to hurt because in the boxing world, they just signed PVC. So they're going to blow up in boxing. They're going to hold their own. I don't so think Fox it, had a good market for them. Well, I mean, they got to go somewhere because ESPN now has top ranked boxing oh, yeah. and they have MMA. So ESPN is doing really well. That, and that was the plan. Like I said, Fox, I didn't yeah. think, I don't think Fox had, I don't think they really knew besides, what to do with Besides fighting. football and UFC going there for that short time, they were kind of just kind of just, you know, yeah. drifting off. Yeah. So. They they kind of put some investment in it and thought it didn't really yeah. get any traction yeah. with your yeah. casual fans. Because your casual fans like, no, no, dude, sh shut yeah. up. Tell me who made the touchdowns by Fantasy League. Exactly. They didn't really care. What they should have done is they should have started an MMA Fantasy League, which if ESPN's smart, you know, they would do. You know, you're walking down the street, you're minding your own business, and you get hit up by a fan, and he has this argument with you, I hear, about uh, you comparing. No, he's comparing uh, John Jones to Conor McGregor. Or he oh, was asking you. Yeah, he was, how did that go down, man? He was, I, well, at the sake of getting us kicked off the radio, I'll try to. Okay. Um, he was trying to say that because he's heard and seen my opinions on Jones and how I think he's failed his ability to, have, to be the role okay. model that he set himself up for. Like, okay, the, let me stop you himself. right there. Does this guy not know that you're a UFC veteran? Does this well, guy no, not know that you lace him up and you put the mouthpiece in? He did. Who rubbed my lamp? <laughs> did you wake me up? Which is why he... Pose the argument okay. because he was basically Posed. yeah he yeah. was basically wanting to see how I thought because he was okay. like hey you can't be okay with the way he acts but not okay with the way okay. he acts I and understand. I tried to explain to him go well one started off going welcome to La Luisa de Lan Cherry Lane or whatever it was <laughs> trying to paint this image of himself and the other one was like yeah I'm here what pay me <laughs> yeah. it's Ireland like yeah. it didn't right away they're like we're gonna yeah. break your thumbs we're here and it's like dude whoa easy so no one's got this false image of what McGregor was or what he stood yeah. for or what his attitude was it was semi-respectful at the same time he's like i'm here mm -hmm. pay me i'm here i've arrived exactly where jones was like i'm i'm an athlete i'm better than everybody else because i'm gifted i have a purpose i'm this i'm that look at me i'm smart i'm not just some flash pan all this image you know he tried to paint this good image of himself only to do the plethora i don't even get into the to, list of yeah, things yeah. he's done and then not to have any real empathetic consciousness of it 
to anything besides like I've seen I, him try I, I thought it was reporters. entertaining. I just I just like that. Chris, have you ever been somewhere, say somewhere, and then nobody recognized what you're doing and say, dude, you don't know nothing about wrestling. What are you talking about? I'm talking about this. They don't even know who you are. Dude, you don't know anything about cage fighting. Just 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 go over there. Yeah, well, yeah, that happened to me. I went to visit my nephew as far as, uh -huh. as, far as wrestling goes. Like I come come to like the wrestling practice. Right. And, you know, and they got a couple guys or you know, state champions. A couple dads or whatever. whatever. And I come in, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you mind if I help my nephew out? And they're like, Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, because they're like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, show yeah. them some wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so to totally. And then, you know, then they're, they're showing them the firemen's and they're kind of doing it the wrong way. And I'm, just like, Let me. I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, I don't want to, you know, be that Skip guy. Skip on some toes. Yeah. I don't want to be that guy. So I go up and I grab him and I'm like, what, what, what do you think about this, you know? Yeah, what if this, you did it this way? This is what I did, at, you know, at Edinburgh. And then, you know, he kind of. Let's me do a thing. He's like, yeah, that, that's kind of interesting. And then, uh, did, he, did, of, did, know, he turn around, then, did he turn around and say, dude, have you ever wrestled before? Well then, <laughs> well, then it's like at the about, I would say about a little past halfway, he's like, so, uh, have you wrestled before? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Because if you haven't, man, man, yeah. you're, you're yeah. gifted, you know, and then, and that's not what I do. I, I, I feel uncomfortable sitting because I'm not one that talk. I don't, I don't, I don't want to sit there because I feel like I'm like arrogant trying to be like, yeah, this is yeah. what I do this, 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 this. Like, I was like, yeah, I went to Edinburgh, it's Division One, I'm a couple time All American. It's hard to be like, humble and, and try to and correct. I just, and I just drop it at that. Yeah, leave it alone. I don't even mention like, you know, national finalist. I've only lost like four times out of like a hundred. You just give matches. him a little of the pedigree and you're like, so, it's nothing, but it's like, no, I've wrestled since I was four years old. This is what I did in college. It worked for me. What you're doing didn't work. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is what we, this is what we do. But they're all. But the next, the, the, this most recent time I went in, uh, their head coach was there. The the first thing he he knew who I was as soon as he walked in the door, and um, you know he pre he pretty much introduced me to all the kids, and then I pretty much ran practice a couple of days because I was only in town for a week. Oh, mm -hmm. that was fun then. So, yeah. But yeah, but yeah, but I know I, I get it completely when people come up. You, you, I don't even like to go watch fights at bars because. <laughs> if the, it's like everyone's like, yeah, I would have punched that dude in the face. Like you wouldn't been able. Yeah, to, you got to hear a lot would, of that. You wouldn't have ducked a single punch. You would have stood there and just ate every single one of them. Sometimes and liked it. I troll yeah. them. Like if I'm out in public somewhere, like if it's if I'm out, if I'm out of town. Yeah. Uh, the best troll I have is sit there. I go, dude, you know that's all fake, right? I, that's that's <laughs> total fake. Like it's so fake. Look at that, bro. Look, come on. And come they'd be on, like, man. dude, I know, right? And I'm like. Totally. Speaking <laughs> of which, it, it is. Speaking of which, I didn't get the chance to watch Rise. It was kind of hard because we're one on cable. But uh, the the Mayweather fight that was that that well, I, Man. All, all I hear was how ridiculous that. Fight it was, was. ridiculous, it was. and a lot of people are trying to say, "Oh, the weight difference, this." And I'm like, "Dude, stop! Tensions, a tensions, a legit kickboxer. He knows what he's doing." And it look at one point Mayweather drops him. And I can't really tell what he drops him from, but then tension does like this basketball flop. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. Like, like made it look, yeah. made made sure everybody saw that he was like super hurt, but got back up. And it's like, even yeah. Mayweather, like you could tell he well, wasn't see, taking a it seriously. A lot seriously. of people were saying things because he was crying after the fight because he lost, and it wasn't because of the loss. It's because he was past curfew and his mom's gonna kick his butt. Maybe, I mean, man, the kid looked I mean, like he was 17 years old, bro. I mean, serious, he really did. That, I mean, but still, yeah. he he's a star over there in kickboxing for a reason. Yeah. He's not a nobody. It's not like they threw some pro amateur guy in there and said, "Okay, why you're are you in. crying when you're making some money, my man?" I don't blame. I, hey, dude, hey. Mike 20 bucks, 20 bucks says he picks up like a drama daytime television show spot because he was able to cry. Or he's going to be on a cartoon or something. Something, dude. But you could just see Mayweather did not. We wasn't taking I can see the honey badger on a cartoon. Hey, hold that thought. We're going to take a commercial break. Come right back. Can you imagine seeing the honey badger in a cartoon? I mean, really? It's not that. You can idea. see it right now. And it proposes. <laughs> hey, we'll leave that thought with you. We'll be coming right back. Rich Ortiz with the Knockout Radio Show. Hopefully I don't get knocked out by the honey badger. Coming right back. Hey guys, it's the Coltrane from The Fighter's Voice. Don't forget, if you want to grab yourself a t-shirt, we're giving these away for $25 a piece. Front, back, not going to get just a front logo. This is nice, guys. I'm telling you, 25 bucks. Go to our website today. You'll be able to pick one up. You support the show. You support the fans. You support the fighters. And you help show your voice by showing support for The Fighter's Voice, guys. Pick up a t-shirt today. Hey, Rich Awful Ortiz here with the one. Fighter's Voice Knockout Radio. I'm your host, and don't forget about Co Escovito. And if you just joined us, we're here with MMA star Ballator, honey the Honey Badger. badger. 
Nuff, you don't. We don't even need to say Chris Honeycutt. Just say mm-hmm. no. the Honey, honey badger. badger. The Honey Badger. That'll be a honey that's a business card. That's there good, you go. That, that is a good name, huh? Honey yeah, badger. it is, dude. Every Ooh. we've been telling everybody about that. Anytime I'm like, about that you name. come up or like like animals come up, tell me, yeah. go ask us, what about that Honey Badger you guys are talking about? Yeah. We'll tell them. Well, that's Chris's fight name now. That's it's the Honey Badger. Because yeah. we were telling about how you found out how they were badass little guys. Little and, Antonio McKee. Yeah. Like honey Badger. I'm just like, you know what? Why didn't I think of that? Right. Because I didn't even really know how 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 badass they were. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm allowed to say that, right? That's I mean, well, you said it. And well, we'll, we'll fit. You said it. What am I to do? I think we get it. What am I to do? Kick your butt? Well, I already said it twice. So I'm like, well, I can try to not say it <laughs> okay. 10 more times. Well, let's, let's, <laughs> not let's, let's, let's not say it. All right. Save that for the podcast. They're, they're podcast. tough. And they're you can, tough. You can add a little yeah, yeah, more yeah. to they're that. They're super tough. They're very tough. They're, yeah, they're enthusiastic. But yeah, everybody yes. loves that nickname. Yeah. Whenever we tell them that's that's your moniker name, it's like a moniker. It's a business card. Yeah, it is. Honey Badger. It is. It is. And you know what? I want to, you know what? I want to take advantage of this right now. When that A bomb just slipped out, the fact that he acknowledged and asked mm. says a lot and shows a lot of respect for the radio show. So there it is there. True. As opposed to I'm some people that just that. let it all go, man. Yeah, I think we're yeah. safe. Well, I think we're good. I think we're good. We are it's good. It's kind of like on the gray area. <laughs> it, it is the gray area. Okay, let's not talk about shades of gray. But I do want to talk about the MMA world, Mr. Coe Escovito, mm, UFC man, vet. You're saying shades of gray. There's just shades of goofiness going on still, man. Like, we were talking about, about the ESPN stuff just to talk about the Dos Santos, which is that's going to happen on the ESPN with Dos Santos and Derek Lewis. So okay. they're, they're not just cutting them loose after the Cormier fight. They're going to keep them around. They okay, feel good. he's still a draw, and he's got a, he's got a good chin. So uh, McGregor's tossing out some goofiness about wanting to fight tension now. So here's what's happening is you're seeing McGregor Gregor fight Mayweather, then Khabib wants to fight Mayweather. Mayweather's like, forget both y'all. I'm fighting tension. And now yeah. McGregor's like, oh, I'm just going to copy you and do that. It doesn't work that way. Connor has zero the amount of draw that Mayweather has to be able to go over there and say, oh, pay yeah. me this. They're going to be like, yeah, you've kind of lost a couple fights. I know yeah. how they operate. Yeah. Like, they're going to go, yeah, you lost your last couple fights. And yeah. We don't really have anyone for you to fight that we think would be a draw. Mayweather's mm-hmm. a draw. Like they love him over there. That's why the whole thing was a joke. It was we all. He laughed all the way to the bank at all of us on that. Yeah, he one. did. Uh, but speaking <laughs> speaking of banking, man, the state athletic commission in Nevada is it Nevada? Yeah, Nevada is going to bank big. What are they doing? Brock Lesnar owes them a quarter million dollars still before he can take his next contracted fight. Like he has a fight scheduled with the UFC. Now, does he owe money from like WWE it's, money no, or the from, UFC money? Uh, it's from the post Mark Hunt uh, punishment fine. Oh, well, see, that yeah. been, that brought bad attention because That's you also tested. That's a quarter million dollars. Oh, my God. He cannot fight until he pays that quarter million dollars to the commission. commission. Well, what's going to end up happening, and all of a sudden you're going to see... You're going to see An a, agreement. Take it out of my next check. Uh, no, I think he's going to go, yeah, take it out of my next check after you add $250,000 to it and pay me in advance. Yeah. Like, they're yeah. going to negotiate something because the $250,000 in advance to the UFC for the millions they're going to make off of him yeah. with the crossover. Don't yeah. get me wrong. I hate Brock. They I think it's goofy. What? They won't even bet on it. Yeah, they won't even blink. That's not an issue. They, they'll, they'll, they'll be they'll, like, they'll done. How much? Done. Does, do, do they want dollar bills? What do they want? I'll call Mike. <laughs> I'll call I'll call him right now. So it's, it's or unless you want to be like the guy from uh, Copa Combate. Remember, he wanted to get paid a hundred thousand dollars in pennies. <laughs> no, 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 I'm sorry, one dollar bill. One dollar bill, so that he could. What's his name again? Paul? What? He wanted the bullet. He wanted to just the bullet. Shoot those off. Yes, he did. Hey, he called it. Yeah. So I don't know how we got on that subject, but he but called yeah. it. Yes, he did. But the whole Lesnar thing is he he can't fight again. He can't. He's been scheduled. They they have a fight for him, yeah. but he can't take it until he pays that. So I think what you'll end up seeing, I honestly don't think he'll end up paying them. What I end up think you'll see, which is honestly UFC, Dana, Reed, Sean, any guys, if you're listening, little idea for you, save you a bunch of headache. See, I like, the way, I like the way we, hold he on. He doesn't have I, to wait, pay. Wait, let, me, let me stop you. I like the way he did it. Sean, Dana, Joe, whoever. I'm going to text you right now. and ju- See, you just threw that out there because you had that clout. So... Get the Diaz brothers on the podcast. <laughs> I know you could text them and call I'll, them. I'll have to and work get them on, on it. I'll have yeah, to work talk on about that. one of them. Yes. We'll have to probably pick them up. They can't drive. They won't be able to drive. <laughs> Not if we want them. Why is their car smoking? It's just it'll get pulled over. Oh, so, okay. but what I'm saying is he doesn't have to pay that fine. Here's yeah. how Brock Lesnar gets out of that. The money's Brock's giving up the money. Yeah. Where the money really comes from is irrelevant. It's a good PR opportunity for both the UFC and Brock Lesnar. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars gets donated to a local charity. By UFC and Brock Lesnar as a compensation of the fine saying, you know what, instead of just giving you $250,000, we're just going to donate it to a charity. What charity do you guys work with? I mean, it's the perfect out. It's the perfect out. 
The money yeah, still gets yeah. paid. The athletic commission gets satisfied. They're like, you were fine. You had to pay the money. Yeah. But what is the, what's the athletic commission going to do? Sometimes with that's the even strategy with some agents on some high profile guys. Yeah. They'll bring uh, publicity to themselves yeah. just so they get their safety net and propel themselves. And now they're wearing a cape and they're Superman. Yeah. And they can even say it's because he messed up. Yeah. Brock messed up. We gave him a fine. I apologize. And we talked about it. We had a discussion and we thought that the $250,000 could be best used as a fine to a charity. Exactly. Everybody wins. Yeah. Everybody wins. Everybody and wins. some poor organization that's not even expecting 250K wins. Or chop it up to several. Give like yeah. 75K out to a couple. Exactly. So, speaking of winning, man, let's win some of these bills. Let's man, pay them off, man. Come my on. mic was starting to get quiet. It and was, starting to huh? get dimmer. And, and I'm he, like, and oh, man. some salsa in there or we something. Didn't, we didn't pay the rent. Yeah. Um, no, real quick, we've got Dying Breed Apparel, Dying Breed shirts, apparel. hat, and stuff like that, guys. Red Wave Tattoo. Remember, hit up Rico. Mention us. You get a 10% off your next that's tattoo. Right. Bobby Salazar Salsa. Man. It's good. I need some more guys. I know. We Send don't it. have any right now. We got a little bit of stains right more. here from some. From food. I know. I saw one. We were like, uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, remember. Actually, wait, wait. Can I go there? Yeah. Long story. On the way I was in a hurry, I left the Bobby Sauer Cellar on top of the car Ooh, in plastic. Yes, rookie I move, did. Rookie I know. move. Because I'm trying to, you know. Yeah, I know. Happens, You're moving man. too fast, man. I am. Hey, we rookie, are. Rookies makes mistakes. It's okay, brother. I've been a rookie for a couple years. But we I'm all bet, been rookies baby. for yes. a while, man. Okay. You never want to go past rookie stage because no. that's when you accept no the fact that the end's coming. No, no. No, so... Uh, North Fresno Primary Care, Dr. Yes. Batista and Dr. Guzman, for guys like our friend the Honey Badger here, blood yeah. work, neuros, things like that. Get they excel at it. They have good relations with the Athletic Commission. They have paperwork on file. They have on hand. They can send it off for you. Um, as always, where we're doing it, Mad Production Studios. Mad Productions. The Mad Laotian, always it. I love watching his videos when he does it, oh, man. Dude. He's all over the place. Yes. Movies, fighting, and you name it. Podcasts, yeah. shows, everything. On location all, podcasts. All on location yes. out of commercials. Yes. Commercials. Yep. I've seen a couple casino commercials. Uh, thumbs up for Richie yeah. and as always our best lawyer around Miles yes. Harris Esquire man yes. picking it up he's got an office downtown guys on Kern Street I'm not going to give you all the details just know that if you're in real serious trouble then I don't mean like oh dad's going to be mad I mean you hit and runs domestic child custody uh, DUIs violent gang uh, charges gun charges all the serious stuff that yeah. everyone's like it's not a slam dunk I don't want to take it yeah. it doesn't have to be a slam dunk his job is to help you exactly you need help Getting away scot free might you not need be help the help with those you're life get. lessons. Exactly. So he helps you when you need help. Help doesn't always necessarily mean you get to do bad and walk off. Help means helping you get this situation done, yeah. getting helping through this with the it. best representation you can, the smartest yeah. representation you can to get through this real problem. And helping you drink responsibly. Don't do it, sillies. Yeah, don't do it. No. Don't do it. It could happen to anybody. Don't, don't do it. Do it. Don't do it. Talking about don't do it. There's some things going on and don't do it. What's this? I'm hearing that this um, gentleman try to fight this UFC female. Ooh, yeah. Don't do it. What happened? And, and, and they posted it. We have that it. picture. Tell I'm me. I'm sure we, we will picture. find Pull that up. picture. Man, that dude. Talk to lip. us about that dude with this minute and a half. It's man. Poliano. It was, it's UFC fighter Poliana Viana beat up a would be thief over the weekend. Dude tried to just rob her, like just tried to purse jack her bag or something like that. Wrong. And she was Don't she was it. like, whoops, no. Don't do it. I'm your Huckleberry today. Dude, <laughs> no, if huckleberry. this is legit, dude, they she whooped his booty yeah. like bad. 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 He didn't tap out either. Well, I mean, when you see a dude that beat up, you gotta wonder if she just whooped on him. It was like, guess who's getting made an example of today? Yeah. Like you're yeah. gonna you're gonna be yeah. an example exactly. to dudes who even think twice about looking at a woman or anybody walking down the street and think Can't I could just that. walk up and take what I want. No. Like Hickson said it best. Someday somebody's gonna try to take something from you and you're gonna have to that guy. Like yeah. That's it. It happens. It happens. You know, I like that sound of bare knuckle. Talking about bare knuckle, I want to say what's up. Shannon Rich is taking on Omar Molina. This is September. No, I'm sorry, February second at Culiacan, Mexico. Bare knuckle TV. Rocky, Bare Knuckle Rocky. TV, yes. Rocky's been around. Exactly, yeah. man. Knuckle Fight Championship, man. So I want to give you props. I want to say what's up, man. Omar Molina, what's up, my man? I appreciate the kind words today, man, and uh, the fighter's voice, man. We got a platform for you whenever you are, are ready. Hey, welcome mm, you to the show, no. my man. No. No? No. 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 Okay, then you got to tell me something I don't know. Even better, Rocky. How you doing, baby? Okay. We need to do a podcast from one of his gyms Let's in Ensenada. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do we it. We need to get like, Make a, it happen. like a three to four day cruise from like San Diego to like Ensenada 
and we'll do like a podcast from like one of his gyms down there. They've got a coalition of gyms listen, down listen. there going on. Listen, you must have heard that the Fighter's Voice knockout radio show who's knocking out the competition, who no one even comes close, and the podcast went on location. I, I heard something about that. Yeah, I heard we'll something. hold that thought because we're going to be talking about that very soon. And also Nate Warren, my man. Well, well, no, the man. Fighters Voice team making it happen. Oh, you were uh, at Freddie Roach Knockout Gym. No, Knockout. I'm sorry, Wild Card Gym. I'm mm -hmm. thinking Knockout. I saw the I saw the picture out. like uh, 45 minutes ago. He's out there hustling, yeah. man. That's a cool picture. I, hey, Nate, cool picture. I like your pictures, man. Every picture you, you're like this. <laughs> Every single one. I'm not mad at you, homie. That's you. That's Nate. It's like someone who doesn't know what to do with their hands. They just. Where do I put my hands? Hey, he's uh, uh, he has this. I think he went like he had this contest where he went running for twenty four hours mm. nonstop. Mm. He did it for charity. Yeah, they was. Uh, and he has he, a good story. He too, was talking man. about yeah. He was talking about the documenting and a lot of that stuff. It's uh, people. People need to remember that you don't have to be able to bench press three hundred and fifty pounds, knock a dude out in first yeah. round, swim four gold medals, or anything. You don't have to be of that breed in order to do things that matter. Like. Yeah that require physical attributes. Like it's, it's a mental thing. It's like 99, 95% mental. Well, like you have to just that push and, yourself. And he's a proven champion in his own aspect. Exactly. Enough said, cause I know I can do it. I wouldn't try to do it. it dude, that's But I can tell you what, he's hours, very man. consistent. I'd, I'd stop after like hour one. He got like, me talking about him here on the show. Like, no, he's, he's very, no, persistent and consistent. Well, that's how, I'm I talking got, about that's how I got the phone call. I'm talking. You got a phone call? Remember when I was talking about how I made yes, waves? Like yes, you got to make. Yes, you, sometimes yes, you have to make yes, waves just yeah, to be heard. Exactly. And at that point, they're like, "What's up?" Exactly. And then you have your foot in the door. Exactly. Sometimes they just shut the door. Sometimes they go, "What?" Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's a different color horse. Like you know what I mean? Like you got to get past the wizard door. That's just all there is to it. Man, that's two references from the Wizard of Oz. Ah, are, we, are you going to follow the Alibrick no. rule right now? Because I know you got to go home. You're making I some tell you, I could tell, I could tell you why I'm referencing this because it's Ignore stuck in my head. Ignore that man dude. behind the screen. No, I watched, I, I goofed up and I watched a YouTube video about like all the myths and legends and stuff and conspiracies yeah. around the original Wizard of oh, Oz movie. Okay, are you talking about, no, see, let's not get there. No, that's I, podcast material. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But that's why it's, those references are in my head because I was watching a video about it and they were talking about other movie myths and stuff, but they had like several from that movie in it. And there was like a lot connected to that movie, like a lot. But that's podcast stuff. Okay, because so, I don't want to lose yeah. Chris here. Chris is like, what are you talking about? No, 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 no. <laughs> He's still looking no. for the wizard, oh, no. the yellow no, brick road, there's... and Munchkin Land. No, no, there's, oh, a, lot, man. there's a lot of messages. There, in there's a bro. lot of I stuff know, in that movie. No, I know. We, that, that's like a whole the... segment right there. Man. That's a, that's a that's, podcast that's segment. That's a whole conversation. See, I don't want to get all creeped up on it, that, it's man. Mainly no. in, it's mainly in the book, though. A lot of those alter the movie. Yeah, dude. Oh, my God. The book is so dark. The Wizard of Oz yeah. book is so dark, is like, really? the, like the Tin that Man, for example. It's not a kid's movie. No, no, it's not. Book. Like, for, Okay, for example, The Tin Man. I'll yeah. just give you one example. Okay. The, the guy with man. no heart. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, uh, The Tin Man. Yeah, no yeah. heart. Yeah. Well, in the, in the book, a witch places a curse on him where he's a hatchet guy. He chops down trees and stuff. He has like this unstoppable urge to start chopping off his own limbs, and they just get replaced over time, oh, and that's, that's how like he becomes demonic, a Tin bro. Man. That, dude, The Wizard of Oz book is so dark. Compared to what you guys yeah. got in the eighties, it's so dark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's wow. no, there's no red slippers. There's it's no, it's no, dark. It's it's a very dark it's hole. Like a tin tin slippers, I believe. Oh, yeah, it's oh, tin they're slippers. So, that's podcast. That's a whole that, podcast. That's man. podcast because I could see my imagination I think, I think just taking off on there. Yeah, but silver, no, actually. chicken breast. You're right. Chicken no. breast is a broiling. Oh, that's good, man. Man, that's Alfredo good. sauce, mushrooms. It's gonna Dang, be. It's gonna bring some back. It's gonna be good. You I got teenagers, sharing, man. There's, man. There's not going to be anything oh, left. No, I got they, teenagers. They eat up everything, man. Speaking of eating up everything, hey, we're going to take a commercial break. Come right back. We got Big Mike here coming on the show. We got some boxing news coming. And also, we're going to reveal when and where and if the Fighter's Voice went on location, which I hear they did. Remember, Rich Ortiz, your host of the Fighter's Voice Knockout Radio, Coa Scavito, the Honey Badger. We'll be right back. Hi, Richard Ortiz here, your official voice of the Fighter's Voice. And whenever I'm watching a fight or just relaxing, Bobby Salazar's. Either this left one here or this right one here, you cannot go wrong. Whenever I want to kick back and relax and watch a fight or just something on TV or just relax, it's Bobby Salazar's. Or even the knockout salsa itself. Jose Ramirez, knockout Bobby Salazar's salsa because it's very hot and it's hot with that green bell. Just like this green salsa right here. This is the official salsa of the fighter's voice, Bobby Salazar's. Hi, I'm Mike Retha, and I'm the Fighter's Voice host. <laughs> How did that sound? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I just said it off the bat because I'm always mistaking his name. I'm saying it one way or another, so I wanted to make sure I said it while it was fresh. Rich Ortiz here. Welcome back. I'm your host of the Fighter's Voice Knockout Radio. With us, we have the co-host with the boxing knowledge, 
and I'm not talking about you got to go to college to get all this stuff. It's within your heart, your research, and just having that knack for it. Welcome to the show, Big Mike. What you doing? How's it going? How's it going, man? Say the name the way it's supposed to be said. Reza. 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 And of course, you know. The Honey Badger. The Honey Badger, yes. Now listen, before, when we're in commercial break, we're, we're going to jump right into some boxing news. But I want to say this, ladies and gentlemen. When is it? February 2nd? February 6th. Yeah, February, February 6th. Right. The Honey Badger, he's going to take his claim on his decision. He wants it uplifted. He wants it to bring it to the governing bodies that, that, that matter. So if you can go to his last fight, what's your opponent's last name? Uh, Van Stinas. Van Stinas. Okay. That fight with the honey badger, Chris Honeycutt. Oh, go, I'm sorry. Costello. Costello. Van Costello. Stinas, C- Costello. Van Stinas. Oh yeah, it is Van Stinas. It's Costello Van Stinas. Costi- Costello Van, Van Stinas versus Chris Honeycutt. Watch the fight yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know exactly what you think. I want your feedback, okay? Because I watched it three times. I wish I could watch it more, and I think that I know that Chris Honeycutt should have been awarded the decision. Unfortunately, it was not. It was awarded the other way. I want your feedback. I want to test your knowledge, your skills. You get to be a commentator, you get to be a judge, and you get to be a jury all in one time. Enough said. Let's move on from that. Talk to us about this boxing news you got boiling, my man. All right, so we got Chris DeGale, um, or... James DeGale and Chris Eubank Jr. are going to be fighting in Europe. I got Eubank Jr., but only because of the movement. But still, once you once you get rocked like that and you've been inconsistent, um, it kind of haunts you. Well, DeGale's, I don't think he's going to do too much. It's more of no, the, they, they got nobody else to fight, yeah, and yeah, exactly. that's the biggest money they got. So, hey, make yeah. your money. Yeah. Uh, we got that fight going on. Uh, we got a lot of people getting added to the Fresno card for Jose Ramirez. Thank you. And I'm glad you talked about Fresno. I wanted to talk about Fresno because yeah, the uh, fighter's voice, we handle Fresno. Yeah, we actually got uh, Ray Ray Beltran, former champion. Uh, he was I thought one- he retired. Oh, no, he's back. He wasn't going to retire. Because, uh, yeah, he went to go visit Manny, actually, yeah. personally, because they're friends. Yeah, so he's, okay. he's going to be there. Um, Brian Vasquez, he was on the last card. He's yeah. gonna be there again. Okay. Uh, of course, Gabriel Flores. You already know. And youngest Jose, ever. They're still supposed. G Nation. St- still adding more fighters to it, so it looks like a good card so far. Um, so po- I'm not sure what the co is gonna be. I know we got Andy, but I don't believe they're gonna put Andy as a co-main. Speaking co-main of yet. Andy, speaking of Andy Vincent's, the Fighters Voice Knockout Radio Show. I'm gonna be with Andy Vincent's tomorrow. Andy is um, he what he is doing? He's going to a youth facility. Okay. And he's going to help out. He's going to be pu- publicly talking to them and, and making that difference, being that role model. We're going to meet the warden tomorrow, yeah. myself and Andy Vincent's. And um, I'm looking forward to that, man. And see, that's a lot of a lot of see a lot of times you see these fighters and you don't know exactly yeah. uh, what they do. You yeah. know, like Jose Ramirez, how he's always giving back for the water oh, and, there, and, yeah. and this on this particular the fight. He, he, yes, he's donating all proceeds to the Clovis community or Clovis yeah, research, Clovis, yeah. R- right? And he does so much. He does uh, for his church, his his uh, neighborhood of Avenal, giving out turkeys. The list goes on and on. But Andy Vincent's man, I mean, he's doing so much. Yeah. He's doing a lot, and he needs to get more recognition yes, for what he's doing because he's definitely. very humble. A lot of times, he just goes to work uh, very hard, and he's also um, into uh, law enforcement, yeah. security. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to say exactly what he's doing, but I don't mess with anybody that carries a firearm. <laughs> But he's going to be there tomorrow uh, talking to these graduate uh, graduation. Um, they're going to have a graduation ceremony, and they're going to go on, and they're going to be back into oh, yeah. the, to the uh, public again. Mm-hmm. So for someone to talk to them and be that role model and give them good advice, man, hey, I'll be with you tomorrow, Andrew. Yeah, good so I had to right throw there. that shout yeah, out Yeah, he's there. a yeah. good guy right there. El Tiburon. Yep. El San Tiburon. Jose. Exactly. Now, somebody else that's on the card from Fresno, California, top ranks own undefeated is Cedro no, Ochoa. Ochoa. Yep. Yes, sir. He's back. Yep, and then... Um, more more news going on there. They have uh, next Sunday. Next Again, Sunday. it's another Sunday another card. Another Sunday. Uh, PBC, as you were talking Those about Those are popular. They're, it's going to be popular for this whole year well, uh, starting. Well, think about it. This one's actually real smart. This is going to be after the playoff games next week. Oh, right? yeah. They right know, after yeah. that. It's yeah. Gonna, and then they're mentioning that, too, on the commercial yeah. right so, after the playoff games. So I know Cole was talking about how, you know, oh, they're not – they're – Every commercial they have, they even had a little um, pre- preview show for that for that fight. Uh, Jose Ustagi and Caleb Plant, yeah, they're going to be on there next Sunday. It's a good contrasting style there. Plant some more boxer, stick and move. Ustagi, if he hits you, you're going to sleep. So that's going to be a real good. Hey fight. man, if you don't promote yourself, who is? And that's why that station is doing a very exactly. good job because they know all those football fans are watching it. And to yep. show that during that time, those, those that promotion is almost like gold. Almost like during the Super Bowl. Yep. You ever watch those? Enjoy those Super Bowl commercials, uh, Chris. Hey. Yeah, I mean, I go on YouTube just to watch the Super Bowl. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you do. especially ones that didn't make the cut. Yeah, yeah. you get it. Yeah, the yeah, cut. Yeah, yeah. 
Not the, the honey yeah. badger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that they they're doing a pretty good job putting those shows out there. They got the other one coming. Fingers crossed, Thurman's supposed to be back at the end of the month, but you know. <laughs> I mean, see, no, I mean, he needs to fight. Don't say you're going to fight and you don't show oh, no. up. Or, or, no, I know. He's scheduled to fight. Two, or what, two and a half weeks away now, but you yes. know, I mean, we've been here before. But injury is a you know what? Yeah. So, and, and it happens. So he's supposed to fight. Speaking of injury, Madera's own, Brian the Lion Lua, he's coming off an of injury. He's going to be fine. Everything's looking great. It's looking up and up. And uh, he's going to be doing some signings, some appearances, man. He's back in the loop. You know, it was really crazy. Is. It was crazy. Me and him found out we actually have some sort of family ties out there in Mexico. Oh, there you go, yeah. man. It's, it's funny. I was talking to him. Do you buy horses too? Because Brian, I mean, he uh, he has if, a couple if, horses. If, man. if I had the type of money that Brian had, then yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah. He has a nice Camaro too. Man. Yeah. So but no, yeah. We wish Brian well, man. I know he's gonna be back in that yeah, ring. In, oh, in ready no to time. see him back. He he was Absolutely. he was he was hitting his little stride there before the injury. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, see exactly. Him back. I mean, we're talking about. I mean, this man's one forty. I mean, he's like a middleweight, Chris. I mean, he really does pop, yeah. and I'm not exaggerating. I mean, the, the man does pop. Yeah, no, I don't doubt it. I mean, I, I, like where I was working with like Pico, it's like it's crazy how much power how, how much power a lighter weight can can put in there if they throw the hit. They got that speaking little torque. Of that, speaking of him, yeah, Pico, yeah, I was I was impressed in his last fight because yeah, he, he he's small, he's quick, and you're thinking oh he probably got a little bit of decent power, and then you're like oh yeah, he's got a lot of power. <laughs> he's hit me with a body shot before. I'm just like oh I can't show you any pain. <laughs> yeah, you're way too small for me to pretend like I'm hurt. Yeah, yeah. that is devastating. Yeah. Leave now, the, yeah, no, they, they, they carry some pop. Speaking of carrying some pop, I got to see, um, yes, the Fighter's Voice. We were in Robert Garcia's Academy. We were on location. We did a recording of the Fighter's Voice Knockout Radio. We stuck around and did a Fighter's Voice Kick Butt podcast. <laughs> the podcast. I almost said it, man, and I'll say it tomorrow. But his gym is just being in there, man. It's the who's who that's there. I mean, talking about sparring sessions, these men were fighting. There was yeah, no sparring there is going no sparring on. At his camp. No, no. He said, Richard, look. I mean, these guys were throwing it, and to see the Jose Ramirez left hook right in front of you, five feet from you, and just land on somebody, that, I mean, talking about power, that man yeah. had some power. I mean, Jose was just breaking these guys down, man. He was just having fun. And some of these guys were just, they, they wanted him to feel his strength. They came at him full-fledged, full, full fledged. and Jose just kind of moved around, would slip a punch, and let him know who's boss in there. Yeah, yeah. and Jose's got that power. We've seen it the last time, so. Oh, no, yes, exactly. But, yeah, I, I've heard from that camp's. Uh, it is no sparring; it's a fight. So now, correct me if I'm wrong. I heard a rumor: Did Manny Pacquiao and Mikey Garcia did they spar? I heard to get each other for the fight. I'm not sure if I read it wrong or heard wrong. I've heard I just that, heard it uh, I, recently. All I've heard is they've talked. Okay, because that's that's a possibility for a fight down the road. No, they well, no, 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 no. As far as sparring yeah, and helping yeah. each other out, because what what better way to prepare yourself for a broner than Mikey Garcia? Yeah, someone who's already fought exactly. him. Exactly, and Mikey. Best southpaw that we've had maybe over the last fifteen years in Manny, so why not? Yeah, so yeah, I, Chris, you're you're a big time boxing fan. Yeah, I mean, I don't really follow it as much as I is that I'm just a student of the sport. Um, yeah, you know, if I could go back, I would I would I would start boxing 10, 15 years ago just to be where. I well, we had be. one of our trainers here, recognized trainers here in Fresno, California, Tommy Avalos. Actually, his daughter was in here doing a photo shoot, or they were doing something earlier. And, uh, yeah, he kept uh, blowing up my phone, man, saying, when are you going to bring Chris back? Because I remember we yeah. had that session in there. I need to get back in there for sure. I need to get yeah. my hand collar going. And, uh, you know, that's still something I want to do. I want to be – I mean, I don't want to just always be in the cage. I want to, you know, get in the ropes and in and, and box too. It's uh, – you know, I'm not just an MMA fighter. I'm a fighter. And hey, man, well, you heard it here I, on the fighter's voice, my man. I mean, boxing is part of MMA. So it's like I might as well – I mean, even kickboxing, I'm, I'm down to do it all. Uh I mean, it's my it's my job. I don't have a day job, so my, I'm a, I'm a fighter. I mean, can you imagine? Hey, what do you do? You know, I, I you know I work with kids, you know, because that's what I do. Or what do you do? Um, you know, I, I type resumes. What do you do? I just knock people out. <laughs> you know, and that's what I do. I fight. Yeah. <laughs> can you imagine that? Put you to sleep or break your arm. Yeah, one. yeah. Take your pick. <laughs> Take I, your pick. Yeah, I mean that. I, I fight. I mean, I, I train to be the best technical fighter and the best fighter I possibly be. So why not? take advantage of all those resources and yeah, different arts. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, that's smart. And, yep. you know, the more kickboxing or boxing I do, that'll just make me a better MMA fighter. Because yep. in yep. MMA, all I want to do is take you down and beat you up there because I'm, you know, I've wrestled since I was four years old. I, I will always feel, no matter how many years of anything I do, I will always feel more comfortable doing that. And uh, just boxing or kickboxing will, you know, make me more, um, you know, make me, Mm, what's the word I'm looking multifaceted for? there. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I'll, I'll, Add to your repertoire. Yeah, it makes me more confident yeah. in those abilities because yeah. in MMA, 
it's like no matter how confident I am in them, I will always resort to my number yeah. one where I'm most comfortable. Yeah. And then after wrestling. And it's it's like in boxing when someone's throwing that jab out there, setting up the next yeah. punch. You know, if you got that other side to a certain level, that knowledge, you're gonna yeah. shoot in for a feint to do a takedown. Person might go down, and you got that right hand or that kick coming in. Bam. Yeah, and I'm tough as nails. So even if I don't win the fight and I fight a really really good boxer, it's like I'll put on a show. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's not the same record. It's a boxing record. Yeah, I'm not trying to be the world's greatest boxer. I'm trying to be the world's greatest MMA fighter. But I will box anybody. Yeah, I like it. And and I'll throw down. I mean. We got, I'm about to get the honey badger in one I'm of these gyms, man. I'm yeah. getting all excited now. It's like, <laughs> no, that's good, though, man. That's what Ooh. I want to hear. Yeah. I mean, that's never been revealed, and now it's revealed now yeah. on the Fighter's Voice Knockout Radio, man. And speaking about knocking people out, I want your take real quick on Davis. Javante Davis? Yes, yes, yes. What's your whole thing? What's his whole demeanor? Do you think he's overlooking his opponent? No. Because I was talking to Robert, and he said, this press conference reminded me of the Broner press conference. With Maidana? Yes, exactly. And you know what? Oh, I it mean, was just one-sided oh, completely, yeah. completely. And, and what Davis is, he hangs out with Broner a lot. Yeah. He has... Tendencies, habits? I won't say he's overlooking him, but... You, I then, think he's overlooking And him. then you can't, you can't with Mars, though. That's the thing. Mars, I feel like, I don't know when his, his limit is for his weight. Yeah. He, he doesn't have the same power that he had at 22 and 18. Right. But you can't overlook a fighter like that. Well, you know what? He truly believes. Yeah, and and that's something you can't take away from no, someone. If they no. have that confidence, no, you, you better come with your A game. No, exactly. So, I mean, I, I, I can see ways Mars can beat him, but there's a reason why the man's called Tank. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, he packs a punch. He's yeah. an undefeated fighter, and, uh, you know, I hear he's the next best thing, but we shall see. Yeah, but see, here's the thing. He's already been the next best thing for three or four years now. When yeah. is that going to run out? That's that's another issue there. He well, he reminds me a lot of uh, O'Hare Davies from England. He was the next best thing there. He's been dropped or he he's lost twice and retired because he he, he there's been a lot it. of the next best things that never panned no, out. But this one, if you watch him, he reminds me so much of Tank. He actually yeah. went up to Mayweather and told him, "Why are you saying that your guy Tank is this guy, this, this, and this?" And Mayweather actually told him, "Well, he's already a champion. What are you?" And yeah. this guy was angling for a fight back then with Jose. Yeah. That would have happened. Jose would have ended that kid's career back then. No. So, no, yeah. No. So You know what? During the interview when, with Robert Garcia, I kind of went a different direction and where I think I thought Jose would, 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 would go, and I was pushing some names out there. I'm not going to give away too much because you got to tune in to the interview. But he tipped his hat. He led me a different way, a different direction. As if to say, I know something you don't know. So I went with the flow, and I'm not going to speculate or guess. They got to tune in. It's going to be up and running in less than 24 hours as I speak. Go to the website, thefightersvoice.com. Go to the YouTube channel, The Fighters Voice. You can get some clips and some teasers at The Fighters Voice on Instagram. And he also let us know about his big promotions he got coming oh, yeah. up, Garcia's Promotions. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be happening. There's a lot we talked about on that, that interview. We talked about uh, the Davis fight. We talked about uh, Jose Ramirez and what he's doing for the community. We talked about uh, Isidro Ochoa. And one guy, I mean, forgive me, it just slipped out. And um, I'm going to make sure I bring that up. And, you know, I didn't mention the young Gabriel Flores okay. during that time. But, uh, um, you know, you just got a lot going on and, 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 and what have you. But he talked about a, a lot of topics, man. And it's, it was a good interview, man. And not not saying because it was with the fighter's oh, voice. Yeah, no, no. He was relaxed. He was comfortable. He was himself. Robert, I, I've spoken to Robert a, a few times. There was once outside yeah. of Dave & Buster's. Yeah. Just sat there. and Yeah, I remember that. I yeah, remember that. And we just talked for a while. Then there was uh, after the last fight. And it wasn't even that I recorded. We were just talking, just talking normal. Like, he can, he can talk to you about anything boxing related. And then mm -hmm. he can talk to you about life. And that's where those conversations would go to. Back no, and, and also, you know, who happened to be there was um, Bam Bam. Oh, Bam yeah, Bam yeah. Rios was there, man. Nice guy. Yeah, Rios is he's, he's hilarious, man. I've I've been oh. around here a couple times. He's uh, he's a is, funny is, dude. Is, you know what? Without going too far or using some bombs right here, man. Tell us some some of the funniest um, things that you experienced with him with Bam with Bam with Rios. Yeah, uh, it, a lot of them have to do with some bombs. <laughs> oh, okay, then we'll talk about <laughs> but, that on the podcast. But no, he's just a he's just like a happy dude, man. Like yeah. he he doesn't care who it is. He reminds me a little bit of a, a Soto Carras. Uh, yeah, that guy. There there was one where. At a fight, this guy got drunk uh -huh. in the crowd, took his shirt off, walking through the hotel. <laughs> Are you serious? That one was, it wasn't Bam Bam, but it was Soto, and that's yeah. that's the type that Bam, well, Bam Bam is just that funny as a guy. Chris, we're at the gym here, right? And we're there and at the gym, and I know some people, and see, in the gym, they only got one restroom in the gym. Oh. So you got to remember, you got all these fighters, they're drinking water, and they got to go to the restroom. Oh, yeah. And see, Bam Bam wanted to change. 
So he was kind of hesitant, you know, and then there was this, um, I don't know, somebody's wife, she was there and she just happened to use the restroom. So he's knocking on the door and she doesn't answer. So he comes back and he asks the whole gym, hey, whose wife is that? He goes, because, you know, I got to go. He goes, I'd change, but I'm wearing a man thong. <laughs> so, so basically yeah, yeah, yeah. he's there and he's there knocking on the restroom and he says, ma'am, are you okay? Are you okay? And she wouldn't answer. So he goes, caca, caca, <laughs> are you there? And then he started doing this. She didn't even see anything. I go outside. He's like making, you know, like, <laughs> you're like an eagle. He's like yeah. trying to make. And I'm going, what's going on here? My, I mean, that's just his whole yeah, character, he's, man. He's, he's, he's a good dude, man. You had to be there, ladies and yeah, gentlemen. I was there. Dude. I mean, to experience that, he is just so crazy. Yeah, you got to see his uh, imitation of Margarito a few years back, too. He, oh, yes. I should have oh asked my, him that stuff or talked uh, to him about that. That one was hilarious. It, it looked oh, just like Oh, gosh. Him. No, he, yeah, he, yeah, he did a good job. Yeah, he, and, then, and then he stopped. Yeah. <laughs> he also, he did uh, Raul Marquez. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. He, oh, he's just. What he did, Manny Pacquiao, was wonderful, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man, I should have asked him about that. Uh, no, real nice guy. Yeah, in his last fight, if you watch his interview, he says it when he's talking about who he fought Canelo's brother. Yeah. He says it in a funny but non-disrespectful way when they ask yeah. him, oh, who are you fighting? And they tell him, you're fighting Canelo? What? No, nah, his brother, bro. What the? <laughs> yeah. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He keeps <laughs> yeah, it real. Yeah, it he keeps it real. Chris, I was talking to him yesterday, and um, off the mic, I mean, this guy's just dropping F-bombs like crazy. He's going crazy. Yeah. So I said, okay, you know what? You'll probably be a better candidate for the, the podcast. I put him on the podcast. This dude's nothing but a gentleman. Oh, yes, yeah. sir. Exactly, sir. And uh, just a class yeah. act. I'm going, let it fly. Yeah. Let it go. Now's the time to let it go. But he was a gentleman. Didn't curse not one time on there. Yeah, he knows what to do. He, he's, he's a professional. Yes, he's a true professional, man. Chris, tell us, what's the funniest interview you've ever had, man? I mean, on live TV that you're just going, oh, my gosh, did I really say that? Uh, did anything ever slip out? Or are you going, dude, did I really say that? That just happened <laughs> on live TV? It had to be on one of your shows. Oh, <laughs> there you go, man. Yeah, it had to be. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know what? We're going to look it up, man. Because you know what I was thinking? when? Because sometimes I don't want to get confused with the radio, uh, Knockout Radio and the podcast. If I ever mess up, just keep going and we'll, we'll make a blooper section. Yeah. yeah, I try to forget those moments as quickly as possible. <laughs> oh, I do too, man. Slippery salamanders, ladies and gentlemen. Go. Slippery salamanders. <laughs> But no, you had to be there, Brandon. He was going, caca, caca, because she wouldn't man. answer the door. Yeah, he's he's a he's funny man. Yeah, he's he hilarious. is funny. He is funny man. I mean, you got to be around there. But it was it was a great interview, man. It was it was a um, he opened up his gym as his home. It was like mi casa, tu casa, oh, yeah, yeah. anything that you wanted. And then Senior was there. Uh, oh, Garcia yeah. Senior was there. He walked in, and uh, somebody from Ali Setback's team was there, and uh, he did an uh, interview with Jose Ramirez, and Jose was rocking the Fighters Voice yeah. hat, Seen which that. was cool. Yeah. Which was he, cool. You you got to think when it comes to Garcia, you got to think all the knowledge and history those oh men have right there. I mean, you're you're going back to them being champions themselves. Well, there was a segment we talked about that because I, I I compared them to some of the big names. I'm going to tell you the who's who, but the legendary, and he was just so humble about it. Yeah, and and you really got to see this interview. Yeah. He really let loose. Yeah, you got to see when he has the interview when they had him and I believe Ronnie Shields. Yeah, and he's like, oh yeah, Ronnie's he's giving all the credit to Ronnie, and it's like. Dude, you're yeah. <laughs> there's a reason you're here though. Exactly. And but that's just who Robert is, man. I mean, he's gonna be a great he's a great trainer. He's gonna give his fighter props. He'll give his fighter more props for doing good than, you know, taking it on himself. He's yeah. just a humble person. And we were there, you know, I'll give him a little shout out. Showtime was wrapping up. They were doing an exclusive with with um uh because of the Davis fight yeah. and uh, they did a one on one with uh, Robert Garcia and they were on their way. And they said, Richard, I want to stick around. I want to see what you do. We exchange cards and information. He goes, But I actually I'm on my way to Wild Card Gym. We're gonna do uh an exclusive with Manny Pacquiao. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, can you imagine that dream job, my man? That's us, it's though. living it there. That's us. Because 2019, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we're on our tour. We're going to make it happen. And it's because of you, the fans, that want the input, and we're going to give it to you. So if you don't if you don't come to the show, we're going to you. So no one's safe <laughs> and no one's exempt. No means yes unless you're on a date. <laughs> right? Very well said, right? Yeah, right, yeah. Chris? Or unless you don't end up like that... Like that young like person mugger. that got beat up, the right? Mugger. That's, yeah, unless you want beat up. <laughs> Talking exactly. about beat up, man. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. I mean, you got to go violate that circle of success. Yeah. You do. And you it's just not going to come to you, it. man. And you don't promote yourself, nobody else is. Exactly. You got to get it yourself. Well, Mike, it's always a pleasure, man. You bring us these hot topics, man. But speaking of hot, talk to us about Michelle, man. So she wants to make this happen, or what's going on here? Yeah, well, she's, uh, again, she's always, as you Michelle as you, Phelps, ladies and gentlemen. As you, you know, know, she's the boxing always busy. Scene, as you know, she's always busy. Yeah. Um, talked to her a couple times last week. She just said uh -huh. to get back in touch with her. Within okay. the next week, she doesn't know what's going on because they just announced that the venues and the fights for the Super Series are supposed to be announced. 
in the next few days. So. And that's her baby out there, right? Yeah. So she's part of that. Yeah. So she's. I'm pretty sure she's gonna be busy over the next few weeks, months. Now, once that tournament takes back off, hey, she's she's on the road again. There she is. And Nancy from Boxy Supreme is gonna be joining us next week as well. Tomorrow on the show on the Fighters Voice podcast, we got Javi Ayala. He's gonna talk to us about his big victory over Frank Mir, Honey Badger. Anybody you want to talk about? Any shout outs? Anything you want the fans to know? No, oh, no. I mean, just get on there and take that poll if you're Remind us about in that, trying yes. to be the judge. Um, you know, it, it would mean a lot to me to, you know, see how many people actually score it the way they do. Uh, I know the I have four or five media places that were on uh, MMA decision that all scored 29, 28 me. But, um, yeah, I mean, my, that's pretty much what my life consists of right now is, you know, gyms, locations, uh, family, and, uh, you know, getting all the evidence and information I need on, on what I'm doing. And other than that, you know, I'm cloud nine, just got engaged, so. I know, I was, I was gonna say that again. Yeah. What color tuxedo are you wearing, man? What oh. are you gonna wear? You gotta wear something just legit. I'm not even thinking about that right now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not even thinking about that. Believe me, she's thinking about her dress. Oh. Yeah, well, she's all a, ten of them well, that she's gonna decide. You'd be surprised. Not, I, I, got, I didn't even look at all of them. I had a list of pictures of uh, this venue, this venue, this venue, this venue. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like, you know, it's normal to stay engaged for a little bit. You know? <laughs> oh, I like that one. Like, you don't get married the week after you get engaged. Where okay. we got some time. Okay. Well, then she got some time to look over so. all the shoes, where she wants. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. But that's it's all fine. her. You know, nah, that'll be fun. It, mm -hmm. That's yeah. all good stuff, man. Congratulations, man. I want to say thank in, in you so much. congratulations, yeah. my man. Yeah, heck yeah. yeah. Thank heck you. Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. Mike, what's going on, man? Any, anything you want to close with, my man? Just be ready for us this year. That's Simple it, man. As that. I like that. We're I here. like that. We're I here. like that. And you know what? All those out there that um, acknowledge what we're doing, I appreciate you know all the support. And non-support, I appreciate the support because it's fuel. It, it, it drives us. And um, hey, man, get on in. There's plenty of room for us. Get on in. You can get in the back or you can get in the side, but get on in. Get with the fighter's voice. Remember, every fighter has a voice, and so do you. And as always, I dedicate this whole show to my son. Te quiero mucho, Richie. I love you with all my heart. Thumbs up for Richie, and it's a wrap. Okay, fight fans, it's not goodbye, but until next week. Remember, remember, remember. It's always voiceography at its finest. So on behalf of Richard Ortiz, Cole Escovito, the special guests, and all the crew right here at the Kick-Ass Podcast, saying hasta luego, babies. And always, thanks for listening.